Hey y'all, welcome to Remote Viewing Investigations with Jessica. I'm your host, Jessica Jones. We'll be peering through the veil to shed light on mysterious cases from all over the world. We invite you to join us on this magnificent journey through space and time to try to unravel these mysteries. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, share this out, and subscribe to Texas Front Porch and to my channel, The Cryptid Huntress on YouTube. You can find us on Odyssey Radio and iHeartRadio and can contact us at Texas Front Porch on Facebook or email us at paracryptidencounters at gmail.com and oracleofthesouth at gmail.com. You can reach us through text at 972-559-0988. If you'd like to support us in what we do here, our Super Chats are open. Thanks and enjoy the show. Well, hello and welcome in to Remote Viewing Investigations. I'm your host, Jessica Jones, and uh, I have a really awesome show for you guys tonight. I know I have on a big, a big hat. Tanya just told me I'm a, I'm the Southern Bell Witch. Okay. <laughs> I know it's a lot. It's a lot, y'all. It's a lot. Um, so anyways, what, what, yeah, we have, uh, both remote viewed the Salem witch trials for tonight. And, uh, and we have a very interesting show for you guys. Uh, it actually is very sad, uh, what happened back in the 1600s here, uh, in North America in Salem, Massachusetts. Okay. And, uh, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight and, uh, and for joining us. This is our Halloween special tonight. And um, and so I'm going to get right to this because we have a lot to talk about this evening. And um, so let me give you a little rundown before I bring Tanya up. All right. So between February 1692 and May of 1693, the deadliest witch hunt in colonial North America took place in Salem, Massachusetts. A series of hearings were held where 200 people, actually over 200 people, were accused of witchcraft. 30 people were found guilty, 19 were executed by hanging, 14 women and five men, and one man was pressed to death, and five others died in jail. Mass hysteria broke out in the Salem area as terrified Puritans believed the devil had made his presence known in the town. Neighbor accused neighbor and family members turned on each other with accusations of witchcraft. But just as quickly as it began, it ended. Puritan officials eventually came to their senses and halted the trials. Records were sealed and any writing or publicizing of the trials were banned. Books and records were burned. Some say it was the first large government cover-up in American history used to hide the pro prosecution and execution of innocent people. Well, my co-host tonight, my special guest, Tanya Braddock is here. Uh, and so let me give her a formal introduction tonight. Tanya is an intuitive empath specialized in quantum healing hypnosis. EFT tapping and the emotion code where she deep dives into the subconscious mind to assist and teach people how to tap into their own inner healing naturally and intuitively. She hosts the existential existential empath podcast where she shares tips and techniques on how to strengthen one's intuitive gifts to allow major shifts in consciousness to take place. She worked in the healthcare field for nearly 15 years where she experienced many paranormal experiences, which opened her up to understanding her abilities on a much deeper level. She's also a Sasquatch and ET experiencer and has participated in CE5 events in Washington and North Idaho. She has the ability to activate people in their own knowledge of light language to assist with elevating one consciousness. All right, so I'm gonna bring Tanya up, my witchy partner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh I'm like a broke down witch like i'm like <laughs> oh my gosh i love your i love your cricket hat though you're you I got the like cricket hat and I, I, I know i look like i just i just left a funeral or i'm going to one so uh it's not very often we get to wear a witch hat so exactly yes well tanya i gotta tell you this this remote viewing target really affected me it was very sad and uh and i i believe through, especially through um, all my data, a lot of innocent lives were lost over this. Uh, what, what kind of, what, what kind of feeling did you get from all of this? No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as part of my quantum healing hypnotherapy, I've had several clients that 
the witch trials have come up, both Salem and the European witch trials. So oftentimes we're holding a lot of this trauma within us from our past lives. And so absolutely, I was sensing that as well, just connecting. And uh, it was uh, very sad, but yet kind of yeah. angry at the same time. It was like just really angered that many people were accused as they were for practically doing nothing or, you know, just being themselves, you know? Yeah. It was literally a witch hunt. Okay. Literally yeah. a witch hunt. And so many people lost their lives. Now, um, I, I don't know, maybe it, should we get into the history first or should we do the data? What do you think? What, what um, kind of path do you think do we the should history, take tonight? Then we'll do the data and then we can chat about the other stuff we have. Okay. All right. Well, let me get my notes out because yeah, I have I have my uh, remote viewing data here, and uh, let me let me check the the chat real quick because I know we have a lot of people in here. Okay. And as I can, I'm going to be pulling up some chat, and I'm sure people may have questions for us tonight. And uh, yeah, everybody, this I've really been looking forward to this this week, Tanya. So thank you for joining me. Sure. Here. Okay. So back in 1692 in February, there were two young girls. Uh, Elizabeth Paris and Abigail Williams, who were around 11 years old, they started having fits, okay, is what they called it, fits. And um, yeah, their behavior started getting mimicked by other girls. And uh, Elizabeth Hubbard and Ann Putnam, these girls were the daughter and niece to Reverend Paris. Now, Reverend Paris has a big thing to do with all of this, okay? He was, he was one of the heads that were kind of accusing people. I believe of being witches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Salem was deeply divided. Okay. Deeply divided. And I believe I have a picture here of a map that we can look at um, that will show everybody kind of how the area was divided. Let's see. Well, I thought I pulled it up. Hmm. You know what? I must not have pulled the picture up. I'm sorry, but there I have it. I have it on my computer. I just forgot to put it in here today. So there was uh, it was deeply divided. So there were farmers in the northern part of Massachusetts called Salem Village. These people thought they were morally superior to the other people who lived around the village. And there were also merchants down in the south called Salem Town. Um, and let's see in the north, Samuel Paris. OK, Reverend Paris was the devout Christian leader and a Puritan minister. He wanted complete Puritan lifestyles there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's, yeah, definitely no witchcraft. Okay. <laughs> no witchcraft. <laughs> um, he saw witchcraft as the largest threat to the village because it occurred with the help from the devil, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Those people must have been scared to death. It okay. sounds like they were terrified. Yeah. And uh, the Native Americans, the natives there uh, sometimes would attack their villages. And so, of course, they accuse them of being devil worshipers. OK. And Anglicans and Quakers were becoming influential, too. And of course, those were devil worshipers to them as well. Yeah. You know, okay. it's funny, Jessica. In, yeah. in my research, I actually researched that witches, pagans, the pagan mm -hmm. witches actually don't even believe in the devil. So this was kind of a funny you know, think that they were being accused of, you know, having a correlation with the devil when in reality they didn't even really believe in it. I know. I, a lot of this doesn't really make sense. I mean, I guess hindsight's 2020. We're living in 2022 looking back at this. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they didn't have access to the Internet back then. You know? <laughs> Probably a good thing. <laughs> they didn't have TVs and, uh, and radio or anything. So, um, <clears throat> you know, they uh, they they had each other to entertain. Okay. And that's about it. And their farm animals and stuff like that. So, okay. Rumors of these girls having fits started spreading around and, uh, and it was very alarming. Okay. So they started accusing women of witchcraft. Okay. And I know I'm kind of skipping some of this stuff because there's a story, a backstory with, um, with what is the lady's name tituba i believe and mm -hmm. uh and we're, we're gonna get into that in just a minute okay but um but the the rumors started spreading about these girls having these fits and uh and they started accusing people of witchcraft okay that they were having these fits because these there were people practicing witchcraft around the village um the first three people who were accused of witchcraft were sarah good okay uh 
She was very unpopular with her town, by the way. Uh, she was hated by her husband. Oh, imagine that. And uh, and she was forced to beg and to uh, live off of breadcrumbs and stuff to survive. Um, and so people didn't really like her very much. Also, a lady named Sarah Osborne was one of the first to be accused. And she was uh, she had shocked the whole village a few years prior to her being accused because she, uh, went after her husband died, she married an indentured servant. Oh, that's, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and the people <clears throat> who were executors over her husband's estate, uh, the Putnams, they didn't like her very much, uh, because she, um, had married an indentured servant. Um, okay. Well, the third person that was accused was Tituba. Okay. And she was a West Indian slave. She had actually baked a cake, okay, yes. a poison cake, kind of, <laughs> and uh, and it it contained the urine of one of the little girls who had been uh, affected, who wasn't having fits, rind meal, whatever that is, ashes, and she fed the cake to a dog. the The point was, if you feed this cake to a dog, it's kind of got a little voodoo background to it, I guess. Uh -huh. And uh, if you fed this cake to the dog, a witch. Wherever the witch was, she would start having seizures or seize up. And uh, that's when you could identify who the witch was. OK, <laughs> um, and so but she was interrogated. She confessed to witchcraft ultimately. And um, and she named Sarah Osborne and Sarah Good as being her co-conspirators. Interesting. Okay. Sarah Good's daughter, Dorothy Good, who was four years old, was also accused of witchcraft as well, a four year old. Yeah. Well, a lot of these people were beaten and, mm -hmm. uh, and tortured uh, and they faced execution. So they started telling on other people. Uh, now, whether those people were actually witches or not, we're gonna get to that with our remote viewing data. Okay. Exactly. Um, but she was not, she was not executed. She actually got off with her life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but the other two women did die. Uh, Sarah Good was hanged on July the 19th and Sarah Osborne, she died in jail on May the 10th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of that year. So yeah. Um, the governor, the governor eventually of Massachusetts, William Phipps, he appointed a special counsel to the court, uh, called court of oyster and terminer. Okay. Uh, to handle all these allegations. And in June, um, William Stoughton headed it and he started, he was the head judge. He started allowing spectral evidence. Yes. And that came up in my remote viewing. And I was yeah. like, what is that? I had never heard of it before. <laughs> yeah. Well, spectral evidence, that's just where you can say that somebody's ghost came and attacked you. And let me tell you, if, if you got accused of being, you know, with the spectral evidence, there was no getting out of it. Like you were basically executed at that point because you could not disprove that. Yeah. And it wasn't fair. <laughs> that's, it's not fair. It's like someone has a dream about you and that's that could be considered spectral evidence because someone's spirit would appear in a dream when their body was in another location. Yes, exactly. So uh, anybody could be accused of this stuff. And uh, that's gonna, you and I were accused, obviously, with our remote viewing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're um, absolutely we we definitely uh, we would have been executed back then. No doubt. There's there's absolutely no doubt. Well, remote viewing, being psychic. I think I was a runner. I probably ran. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even just being a strong woman, too. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these women, if they they back talk their husbands, they were going to get hung, you know? So it's, um, yeah, basically he, if you didn't wear the right thing, act the right way, <laughs> do the right things, eat the right things, then you could have been accused from a variety of ways. Exactly. That's right. Um, well, when they, it, when they, uh, started allowing for the spectral evidence, you know, obviously only the devil could do that. That was something the devil did. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so once you're accused, it's impossible to defend, Everyone was convicted that was accused of that for the most part. And, uh, and witches were actually tested when you were accused of being a witch, yes. they would, they would put you through a series of tests. Okay. And if you could pass these tests, they might may or may not let you go. Uh, now one of those tests was the called the prayer test. And, um, and you had to recite the, the Lord's prayer with no mistakes. Tanya, no that stuttering. Meant, yep. No backtracking, no nothing. You, nothing. you had to say it like a pro. 
or else. And then there was the prick test too. So they claimed that when a devil and a witch made a pact with one another, the devil left an insensitive mark on the witch, which could have appeared as a mole or a birthmark. And what they would do is they would prick it. And if they didn't seem to react or respond to the pain, then they were considered a witch. And they also had what was known as the swimming witches or the swimming test. So uh, if, um, you know, water would actually reject someone, I guess, who had been taken over by the devil or who had had been doing witchcraft. And so they would try to uh, see if they would float or if they would sink. And if they sink, they were innocent. But if they would float, they were considered a witch. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, well, you know, back in that, we're going to also be talking about the European witch hunts, okay, yes. as well. And those were uh, the century before this. And, you know, women were, and, and men too. And uh, men if, too. Someone asked that. It was men too. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you had a mole or a freckle on your body, that was, that was considered you being a witch. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that too here in just a little while, but, um, I mean, you could okay. be making some herbal tea and you would be considered a witch. Anything that was healing, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. A lot kind of them were healers. A lot of these women and men who were accused were actually healers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, let's, let's get into what happened. Okay. Cause we're, we're going to get into this in a little more detail with our data. Okay. So 19 people ended up being hanged to death. Five died in prison and one man, Giles Corey, uh, he, was pressed to death. Okay. Now, Tanya, that that's where they actually put like a board over your body and put rocks on top yeah. of it. Right. Huge rocks. Like, and then they would, they did it as a form of torture to get you to confess. Well, Giles got to a point where he was screaming more rocks, more rocks, because he knew he was going to die and he wasn't confessing to something that he didn't believe that he had done. And so he was actually, um, basically suffocated. I mean, he, his, he was crushed. He was crushed to death and then ended up suffocating because he couldn't breathe with all of these heavy boulders, you know, on yeah. his chest, which is a horrible, horrible way to die. It, that is a ter it's terrible. Well, all these are all needless deaths in the end, because we're, we're going to get into that in just mm -hmm. a minute, um, which makes it even just so much more tragic. Um, so, yeah. So the young girls, that had been accusing uh, everyone of, of witchcraft uh, because they were having these fits and it all stemmed from, uh, is it Tinaba? What is that her name? Tinaba, Tinaba. Yes. Yeah. So uh, they, they started just accusing a lot of people. And there's one main woman at the, at the middle of this and it was Ann Putnam Jr. She accused a lot of people of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the vast majority of, of those convicted and the vast majority of those that were executed, she had a hand in that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so around September, okay, this went on for months. Okay. And around September, the public started getting fed up. They were like, this is too much. It was a wild debacle. I mean, everybody was getting, you know, accused. There were hundreds of people in jail or being executed. Um, spectral evidence became questioned. Okay. Mm -hmm. People were like, all right, this, this is out of hand. The governor's wife was accused of witchcraft. Okay. So that, of course, it's always when somebody in power oh, yeah, when somebody gets accused, <laughs> then, then there's a problem. Her wife gets accused, yeah. then it's done. <laughs> yeah. Well, clergy members beg the governor to uh, dissolve that court and replace it with one that doesn't allow for spectral evidence. Now they didn't want to just get rid of it completely. They just wanted a court that didn't allow spectral evidence. Okay. But by May of 1693, a year after the trials began, they ended abruptly. OK, uh, those in prison were pardoned and freed. Twenty five victims. Oh, did I say twenty five? I thought there was only 15 or how many people got killed? I wrote twenty five. Right here. 19. It was 19. But some. Well, I think there were maybe some more people died in jail. In know? jail. You're right. Yeah. They 19 did. They were actually uh, uh, executed and, or executed. And then there were some that died in jail. Yes. There were even babies that died in jail, newborn babies, because some of the women were pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was at least one baby that died in, in jail. Uh, and so that's that's horrible as well. Um, but many who accused the victims ended up regretting it, of course. And even Ann Putnam Jr. apologized and professed the innocence of all those victims. So she felt she she, she felt, felt, felt bad mm -hmm. afterwards, of course. Um, but in May of 2022, I guess the Massachusetts government decided to exonerate the last. Yeah, 2022. <laughs> they finally exonerated the last of the witches, okay, that, that weren't actually witches. Um, 
which is ridiculous. Okay. But okay. But at least, I guess, at least they were recognized. Okay? Yeah, I guess. So, yeah, I guess so. Um, very tragic that that happened. Um, thank you, everybody. Tanya and I are loving our hats tonight. Y'all are really sweet. <laughs> uh, this is, this is, it is, it is um, Halloween. So, okay. So with my data, let's just get into the data real yeah, quick. Let's get into the data. Uh, so that's the history. We have so much more to talk about. So with my data, I 100% picked up, it was all innocent people were, were murdered, basically. Yep. False it was accusations is what false I got. False accusations. Yep. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of, uh, the accusers were the guilty ones. Yep. Okay. Pointing the finger I got others. that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no witchcraft involved with any of this. I didn't even pick up Tita, but was doing voodoo or anything. I didn't pick up on that. She was that. doing oracle cards. Yeah, yeah. she was doing well, tarot cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, it was, it was spiritual warfare basically is what that was. And, uh, and people were being scapegoated. I picked up on property deeds were involved and things like that. So I was, mm -hmm. I was picking up on a, a property aspect. Like people were jealous of people or mad because they had done bad property deals and, um, and things like that. And so they were just pointing fingers. It was also a big show. And these girls, these mm -hmm. young women were getting a lot of attention and yeah. uh, and so it was actually working out kind of well for them because they were getting attention they wouldn't normally get. And I was picking mm -hmm. up on that as well. Um, but it was enemies were being eradicated is what I is what I literally picked up in the data. Enemies were being eradicated. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of um, I got corruption and I got um, the purge actually is what I got. It was like a purge. It was a purging of those that because they were accusing those. That if you were poor, if you weren't married, if you lived outside of the town or if you had, um, you know, you just weren't valuable to them, then they were accusing you of that. And so I had gotten that it was a purge. It was like a an olden time purge. Yeah, I absolutely got that. I actually picked up on a human reset. Okay. And yes. I know that's kind of a term that we hear a lot these days. And um, yeah, text. Yes, y'all, you got a witch on your team tonight, text. Okay. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I, I did pick up that there was, it was like a human reset and it mm -hmm. was, um, it was like a purge. It was getting rid of, of people that they didn't want. I mean, they had the intention of getting rid of a lot more people than they got rid of. Absolutely. Okay. And Jessica, I had picked up that I had gotten the word loosh. So for those of you that know what loosh is, it's just a siphoning of energy. Yes. And so there was so much fear and chaos and, uh, you know, it was just, it was just out of control that they were actually siphoning the energy, the powers that be that were, were doing this. And I actually yeah. picked up on uh, church as well. So the church had a lot to do with this too, that they were doing some things that they didn't want fingers pointed at them. So then they started to point their fingers at, you know, back at those in the town and in the village. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was getting that people were following the lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. People were scared to go against the, the crowd. Okay. And the herd, the herd how mentality is mm -hmm. the herd mentality. And so once one person would point a finger, everybody started pointing fingers. Okay. And, and nobody was standing up for anybody unless you got accused. And then you, you either pointed a finger at somebody else to get out of it or, you know, and, and the people who ended up being executed, they stood by the fact that they were innocent and they would not, they would not say that they were doing witchcraft. They said, no, absolutely not. The truth is more important than you getting a confession that's not true. Okay? You know, it's, it's funny you say that because I actually got hot potato. You know, mm -hmm. the game, I was visualizing that game hot potato where you, you have the potato and then you, you, you pass it off and you hand it off and you hand it off yeah. because you don't want to be the one with a potato. And that's ex exactly the visual that I was getting. It was like, if one was getting accused, they were as rapidly as they could think of ways to accuse someone else to get the light, you know, the limelight off of that. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want fingers pointed at you if everybody's no. pointing, you know, I mean, I actually have a great picture here to show tonight. Uh, that's from the crucible. Okay. This is a play that's about the Salem witch trials. And this is basically what it was like. Everybody's yeah. pointing fingers and, uh, and there wasn't a whole lot people could do about it. Um, unless you, knew people in high places and could get a pardon from the governor, you know, um, you were pretty much toast literally. Yeah. Um, when it came down to it. 
Okay, so yeah, as far as the remote viewing goes, I, I do, my data is, per, my personal data uh, is in my Patreon. So shout out to all my Patreon members on here tonight. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Uh, my data and a bunch of more information is on Patreon today and tonight. So if anyone would like to join, hey, if y'all join Patreon, y'all wait for a couple of days. If you're not already a member, because they'll charge you twice. Okay. They charge every the first of every month. So y'all wait until next week. Okay. Uh, to join. But I'd love to have y'all. Please do join. But uh, but yeah, there was a whole lot of guilt uh, wow. of, of people. And I think that people knew deep down in their soul that they were guilty of accusing innocent people all along. Okay, all along. But it was a mass psychosis kind of thing, mass hysteria. Um scapegoating guilt by association yeah, uh, hiding yeah. the guilt mm -hmm. the accusers were the bad ones i mean that's that's what my data suggests a hundred percent um and a lot of people a lot of very innocent lives were taken over this okay um so in this I, actually i have i have some visuals to show the audience tonight, Tanya, uh, of the enormous amount of people who are affected by this. Okay. So we have, these are the, the main accusers. Okay. So these are all young women for the most part. Okay. So we, uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of women there. Okay. Uh, these are the, the girls who were afflicted, who had the fits, uh, which were kind of like, flailing around and their eyes rolling back in their heads and they were shaking and all that kind of stuff. It could have been like a mass hysteria or something. I mean, it could have been something very psychological. Mm, I, but according to my data, it was, it was just kind of a show. Yeah. I okay. didn't pick up that it was a virus or, or uh, anything mm -hmm. like a fungus. I know I had read that somewhere. I didn't yeah. pick up on any of that. I picked up more. It was just, kind of psychological, you know, psychological warfare a little bit, spiritual warfare. Uh, it was just I got spiritual warfare. Yeah. Ter ter they were terrified. They were terrified that they were going to get accused and that they were going to be killed. So they would just, you know, by any means possible survival of the fittest, you know, point yeah. the finger at whoever they could that they think would, uh, you know, take the, take the finger off of them. Yeah. It was hot potato. I like that. That's hot a great potato. analogy, actually. Yeah. OK, well, let's go to the next slide here. OK, so we have those are the accusers. Now, there were other accusers as well. Um, these in included some of the people who confessed. So these people were um, accusers, um, but these are people who pointed the finger at other people when they were accused, too. OK, mm -hmm. so. A lot, lot of people there. Okay. And these are the people who were executed. All right. Um, a lot of them were executed in, in groups. Okay. Um, the last day that people were actually executed, there was quite a, quite a few there. One, two, three, was that seven or eight on that last day? Um, and did you notice that that was on the solstice? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. The 22nd there. So it's usually around the solstice time, which we know that's a root ritual time. So that may oh, come up ritual. Later. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I had okay. that come up. I had yeah. some of that come up in my reading when I, so I remote viewed the Salem witch trials, but then I was guided to do the European witch trials. And I was picking up on a lot of ritual activity uh, specifically with the European witch trials, but not to say that that wasn't what was going on in Salem, you know, as well. So, uh, you know, and we all know that the, the solstices and the, or the equinox, you know, that was the equinox, the solstices and the equinoxes are big days, you know, for that ritual activity. Oh yeah. Wow. I mean, it goes back to the beginning of time. So mm -hmm. how, why would it not be, you know, relevant to all of this. Exactly. That's a great point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we had the executed. Okay. So these are all the people who died in prison. Okay. A lot of people died in prison. Um, people died in custody. Um, you know, and, and there are some people that were pardoned. Okay. Some people were a pardoned by, like I said, if you knew the governor or somebody, maybe even one of the judges, they would pardon you. Okay. And, uh, or perhaps if you confessed, you know, who knows? But some people, well, I guess those are the people who pled guilty. So Tituba, Tituba pled guilty and was pardoned. Okay. So the people who survived, okay, these are people who were not found guilty or otherwise survived the trial period. So some were, were released on bond. So if you could pay to get your family members out, 
Uh, there was one person that was able to do that. And then a whole bunch of people escaped. Okay. And I'm talking about ran. Okay. So <laughs> they, they, um, I don't blame them. I mean, it no. was pretty much you were, you were going to die uh, in jail or by being hanged uh, if you didn't flee. So um, some of these people took off running and, uh, and were able to escape. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know that aspect until uh, I did my research on this. Yeah. And some of the, if they had an animal, some of the animals were killed as well, because uh, when you look at witches, oftentimes they would have a familiar with them, which they thought that witches could shape shift and turn into like a black cat or even a dog or, you know, a, an animal. So if they were accused, they often would kill the animal as well because they thought that potentially it was a familiar. Oh, now, now they cross the line. I'm I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's terrible. That that's just, it just adds to the, the devastation of all of this, you know? Um, and so, well, some people died in prison waiting to be executed, I guess. Um, one person died because uh, they were, they were found not guilty, but they couldn't get out of jail until their court fees were paid. So they ended up dying in jail. I mean, it had to have been really rough conditions. I'm sure they didn't have air conditioning or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it was probably dirty. There's no telling. They were mm -hmm. chained to the floor and uh, who knows. But um, there were there were babies born in, in these prisons. OK, mm -hmm. Mercy, the daughter of Sarah Good, uh, she was born and died in prison right before her mother was executed. Um, which is horrible. And, uh, and then John, the son of Elizabeth Proctor and John Proctor, uh, they, th that baby was born in jail as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a lot of people just died in prison. So before the trial and a lot of them, it was due to torture and uh, mistreatment. Yep. Um, now there were people who were released from prison after the governor ended the witch trials abruptly. Uh, Mary Black uh, she was a slave who was arrested and indicted, never went to trial. And then uh, a couple of people were released after they had sat in jail for almost a year. OK, and then uh, people that were not indicted here. And then we have all the judges. OK, mm -hmm. that's a lot of judges and justices there. And I don't see a single female on there. Do you? <laughs> well, of course not. Women didn't have that right back then, you know. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, there's just a lot, like, I just wanted to show all the names so that the audience would get an idea of how many people were actually involved in all of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was just in Salem. Okay. So, yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about, you know, my, you know, I've had, okay, so I do past life regression. That's what uh -huh. I do. And, uh, when I first, uh, started learning about regression therapy, I actually was regressed. And when I was regressed, I went back to my time in Salem. And so I was yeah. not one of the ones who was hung or, uh, you know, uh, executed. However, I was one of the ones who was banished and many were banished from the villages and the towns and they were outcasts. And honestly, the ones who were banished went through tremendous heartache and, and, and pain because they were separated from their family and they were on their own. And so I was one uh, back in that time, I was an apothecary. That's what I did. So I was one of the people like a medicine woman, they would come to me and I would uh, use herbal remedies and I would help heal people. Well, I was accused and then I was banished. I was shunned from the community. And what had happened is I had established myself outside of the community and some of the members, uh, the accusers had actually come and found me at late at night and they tortured me and they beat me and then they buried me alive. So in oh. my past life regression, I have in this life, I have had several times where I've had issues with claustrophobia or um, where I can't breathe or something along those lines. So I had asked that in my quantum healing hypnosis session, you know, why do I struggle with claustrophobia so much? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a big deal, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. And it actually came back to that aspect of me being buried alive during the witch trials. And so wow. many of us have had these past lives, you know, yeah. whether we're in the European witch trials or or Salem. And so what comes up often with my clients when they bring up the witch trials or it comes up is our throats, our throat chakras. So oh, yeah. many of us have a hard time speaking our truth. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that we have been 
hung. And I actually learned the other day from uh, a gal who does regression therapy as well. She said, some of us actually have lines on our neck and the more lines we have, we can count them. That's how many times we've been hung. And I'm like, well, that's a really interesting concept because I've got two lines wow. there. And I remember as a kid, I've always had those lines. So, you know, that's a really, uh, I had never heard that before. And I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I thought that was an interesting Addition, well, you know, well, I, I have some of those lines, so <laughs> who knows? Yeah, that's that's terrible. It's frightening, but it's also very interesting too. Wow, I um, that's that's pretty uh, interesting because you know, I I got very emotional when I was doing this target, and I've always felt some sort of connection to the witch trials, and I'm not I, I'm not sure if it's the American witch trials here mm -hmm. or the European, probably more the European, because I'm I'm. I, I feel more of a connection to the the burning at the stake and things like yes, that. And that's more European. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I do, but I do feel a connection. I think a lot of people, especially women, we do feel a, a connection to the spirit of this and to the mm -hmm. energy of it and some kind of uh, some weird, interesting connection there. Uh, it's almost like we, we do have some sort of a lineage connected to that. We do. And oftentimes, okay, so for me, for example, my senior year in high school, we took a trip to Boston and one of the stops was Salem. And so uh, we had toured the town and I remember touring the town and then we had gotten to the place where they had held uh, the trials and they had us all sit in a circle and they would turn the lights off and then they were going to share the story. Well, the minute I sat down in the circle, I started to have a panic attack. I could not breathe. I started to freak out. I started to just have just, I felt the energy of the location. Well, my teacher had to walk me out of the building and I could not go back in that building at that time. I just, I had, it was like a fear or a terror had come over me. And now, you know, now I understand I, I'm highly empathic. I was obviously picking up on whether it be my past lives at this location or picking up on the actual energy you know, of those who had suffered um, the, the accusations and because it was actually in the trial hall or the courthouse where I had had this attack, you know, oh, happen. Wow. So uh, I had my own personal experience there of just reliving some of the fear and some of the panic and anxiety that many of us, many of the people, you know, during that time had actually experienced. Yeah. That is, uh, that's, it's really sad, but you know, it, before maybe five to 10 years ago, I would not have understood that connection. And, uh, mm -hmm. and we'd wonder why we get anxiety for, you know, even studying these things or looking into them. Well, maybe it was in a past life. I am a firm mm -hmm. believer of reincarnation myself. That's my personal belief. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and I, I do feel a connection to all of this. Um, I do. And I actually, I have, I have some pictures that we can show as well, you know, going back to the European witch trials and the witch hunt. I mean, that was back in the, I guess the 15 to 1600s, I believe. That, 13, it, was it actually dates all the way back to the 1300s and it lasted a lot longer. They called it the great hunt and 40,000 people died in the European wow. witch hunts. And it was mostly, um, in the areas of France, Germany, Scotland, and England mostly, but it did trickle out into some of the other countries there. But uh, this was well before Salem. And there was a nice little time frame in between the European witch trials and Salem where nothing was going on. Well, at least that wasn't documented, mm -hmm. you know, that was going yeah. on. But during the European witch trials, there was a separation of the church, the Catholic church. It separated from the, from the Catholics and the Protestants. And at this time, they were looking for followers, both of them. So what I was picking up in my remote viewing data is that they were using this as fuel to gain more followers. So it was like, all right, you want to, the Catholic church is saying, okay, you want to be Protestant? Well, we're going to accuse you of being a witch unless you switch over to be Catholic, you know, and that mm -hmm. there was just this, you know, kind of push and pull going on to try and get uh, more followers, you know, to, to come to the church. But the people believe that the witch hunts protected them from Satan and that the churches actually believed in burning demons and burning, you know, they think of hell and, and the devil and, and fire. And so that's why the European witch trials, they were much more, apt to burn at the stake because it was more of a religious uh, mm -hmm. type 
uh, accusations or, you know, accusing of, of people versus Salem, which was just more a village in a town, you know, kind of accusing the people. It was more civil. Yeah. Well, Tanya, so Jean, Jean was asking, uh, can I explain what a witch is to everybody? Well, a witch is a different thing to everyone here. Mm -hmm. Now, according to the witch trials, a witch was just a person who, you, mostly a woman, but there were men too, uh, that were accused of performing witchcraft and working with the devil. Okay. Uh, so working with demons and working, just having a relationship with the devil. Okay. But, you know, of course a witch could be anything. Uh, you know, some of us have been accused of being a witch as this lifetime. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and it, it may follow some of us lifetime after lifetime, but I don't think that there's that much of a, of, of such a horrible connotation to it these days. You know, uh, I think that society is more open to women being healers and things. Cause a lot of mm -hmm. times a witch is just a healer, someone who uses herbs and potions mm -hmm. to, to heal people. And, uh, you know, what, what do you say about that, Tanya? Yeah. It's really just someone who knows how to tap into the universal energies, who knows how to <laughs> use the, the elements, the earth, wind, fire, water, right. Ether, someone who can really tune into that. But, uh, you know, as we all know, the the churches have misconstrued that because they wanted to uh point fingers at you know the pagans and to try to manipulate and bring more people into the church and so mm -hmm. you know if you go you know dating back to to you know all the way back to that time many of the pagans were tuned into the land and that they used this energy which is our chi our prana you know, and that they were being accused of witchcraft when really they were just utilizing universal energies. And yeah. that's what many of us are remembering, you know, now during this great reset, <laughs> this yeah. great awakening. Another right? great, another reset, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and I would argue that, you know, I like to read Oracle cards and tarot oh. cards and things. And I feel like I am a channel as well from mm -hmm. to you know, for the divine in some, you know, I guess always. <laughs> and, uh, and so just to bring messages down from, you know, from source. And so I think that there's a connection to God. And, uh, and so I think it gets really misconstrued. And also I did a show uh, last week on Mahaley Lancaster, who is a famous fortune teller from here in Georgia, uh, from Heard County. Okay. And, uh, and she called herself the biblical oracle. OK, biblical. And she was a devout Christian. And I think a lot of the well, especially the people who were being accused of witches during Salem, during the trials, they were all devout Christians. OK, but um, I think a lot of people who are in tune with the divine, with salt, with source, with God, uh, you know, uh, using div divination and things like that, um, seers, oracles, uh, they were accused of being witches. Okay. And so if that's being a witch, then that's what a witch is. Um, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. like, you know, just tuning into your higher consciousness, that higher self, that, that God source energy, that creator energy, that's how you tap into the universal energies. You know, it's just really being, you know, connected and the earth plays a huge role in that, you know, and, and in our modern society, we've been highly disconnected, you know, from that, but back then, that's all they had. That's all they, yeah. you know, really could work with. They worked with plants and, and herbs and mushrooms and the, 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 you know, the water energy and all of that. And so they were just really, you know, having, they had much more of a deeper understanding of the, of the sun and the moon and, you know, everything, because that's all they saw. That's all they knew. They didn't have televisions and smartphones and you know, all these distractions. Exactly. Like we they weren't today. taking selfies back then. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but they they were also looking for recognition and things like that. And that's why those girls went into the, all that hysteria and were getting that attention. Uh, and they're easily they were easily swayed by people who uh, uh, people of power. Perhaps some say that they were being, you know, people were whispering to them on to who to accuse next. You know, um, you know, go have your fit and, you know, you'll, you'll get your 15 minutes of fame. Right. And, and people are still looking for that. Through TikTok, you know, absolutely, absolutely, stuff, you know, um, doing doing dumb things for for fame and fortune. Okay, and uh, not to say these girls got rich off of this or anything, but they did get attention where they might not have had attention before. You know, in that kind of a case. 
um, which is yeah, really sad. So I was reading, this is, this is a strange little fact. I was reading about where the broomsticks came from, how witches ride broomsticks. And it actually dates back to the early uh, 1400s when the, they would um, take different herbs and they would create what's called a tropane alkaloid hallucinogen. It was kind of something for them to get high off of, you know, but it also was used as an ointment or a salve and that the way that they would administer it was vaginally or rectally because it would surpass the liver and it would not create digestive issues. So how would they do that? They would use a broom to do that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I never heard that, that, which is weird, right? But that image <laughs> of a woman oh on God. a broomstick actually dates back to that. So if that wants to misconstrue your Halloween. <laughs> well, I did not expect this conversation to go there, Tanya. <laughs> but that's, that's just the weirdness of how someone can take oh something God. and turn it, you know? <laughs> okay. Well, I just learned something new tonight. I think I, I just got to <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, hey, I working in healthcare. That's not a big deal for me. That's really not a big deal for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I just lost my whole train of thought on that one. So thank you, Tanya. Thank you. I thought I'd say that in That's the last awesome. five minutes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. This, this time has been flying by, by the way. Um, yeah, well, okay, so we were talking about the European witch trials mm -hmm. and uh, and all of that. It crept over here to America, okay? And uh, and I, I do have some pictures of, of some of these trials. These are some artist renditions of what was going on there. And uh, let me tell y'all, this was very dramatic, very dramatic, very traumatic, very dramatic. Um, I mean, th this was a modern day soap opera, basically, where a lot of people died. So, um, yeah, you know, it was interesting, Tanya, that they all of the books and the records on this incident, uh, on this whole Salem witch trial uh, time, this era, it, they were all ordered to be burned and, and thrown away. OK, so there wasn't a whole lot of evidence that this even happened. OK, they did not even. Uh, mark off the spot where these people were executed, where, where they were hung. Yeah, I, I was reading that where a lot of them were, where the trials were, there's a Walgreens there now, which I thought was kind of random because I just recently watched Hocus Pocus 2 and they go to a Walgreens like in the yeah. movie. And that movie is all about finding children and, and eating them. And it was just like, Oh my goodness. You know, so there is definitely a Hollywood theme when it comes to witches and uh, you know, of course the devil aspect, but also yeah. the children finding the children and uh, you know, wanting to eat them. So it's like, okay, you know, obviously that was started in Hollywood to break into our subconscious mind, you know, and into our psyche yeah. to make us believe that that's what witches truly are. But like we talked about earlier, it's really just connecting to the earth, you know, and, and being one, you know, one with, with nature. Yeah. That's, it's, it's actually really sad. It's, it's so convoluted and, and twisted a little bit because these people were devout Christians who were being accused of being witches. Uh, but then, you know, your remote viewing data came back with the loosh. Mm -hmm. And that's what some people say, the reptilians and, you know, I did a show about that this week too. About the oh, that's right. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. And actually, that's the one of the two videos that I've done, uh, two live shows that YouTube has actually flagged as with those Wikipedia things, where they uh, they want to put the context behind it. And the other one was the the moon landing video. Interesting. So they wanted to make sure that we didn't get reptilian humanoids out of context. Interesting. Which hmm. is really weird, right? Out it of is. all the things that we talk about, they're worried about misconstruing what a reptilian humanoid is so huh. yeah right I, i'm like you think I, if it wasn't it a, if sense. it wasn't a legit point then why would they care why you would know? they even care exactly <laughs> maybe because i i said the queen of england might have been one <laughs> <laughs> well i, I, I said i didn't know for sure though i was just saying <laughs> that's what people say so, um, <laughs> could have been a way to do. <laughs> it's interesting that that it's stuff like that that gets flagged, you know. Um, mm -hmm. why? Um, well, and we're talking about the louche, and that is uh, the energy that 
some of these entities live off of, you know, and it's the sadness, the pain, uh, the desperation, the frustration, all the bad energy uh, that pain and suffering causes. Uh, that's what they're, I'd say they're ancient energies here that are eating, feeding off of that. Absolutely. And I mean, you look back at our history between the wars and the massacres and the, the witch trials, all these things that created fear and, and uh, you know, just chaos. They're feeding off of that, you know, and, and you know, who's to say, obviously, they're still doing it now. You know, they're still continuing to feed off of the fear. And, yeah, uh, you know, and that's how they were doing it back then. Now we have ways they can do it through the television where back then. They had to do it in the town, you know, they had to, to create the ripple effect within the village, you know, where people that's live. That's right. They did. They did. Because it was, there was, yeah, that's why I'm so, I, I get really worried about my television and the shows that we watch, you know, and, uh, and all that negativity coming into my house. Gotta mm -hmm. be really careful about that. Oh my gosh, you guys, we have so many people in the chat. I'm so sorry. I have not gotten to all these comments. We only have two minutes left, Tanya. So <laughs> I'm I'm trying to figure out do we want to do we want to keep going tonight a little bit or do we want to cut it in, in two minutes? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, is there anything else that anyone wants to to hear about? I mean, that's pretty much my data yeah. that I got, and based off of you know after I received my data, the the research that I did too. So yeah, well, that's I mean, my mine was all in a nutshell. Mine uh, in the nutshell, it was that this was just a big witch hunt, literally, and uh, there were no actual witches involved. And it was, um, it was, it was just a bunch. It was basically innocent people being murdered and mm -hmm. executed. Uh, now today in Salem, Tanya, I know you said you had been there when you were in high school, uh -huh. uh, but today I actually looked up what what's going on there, and they, of course, the whole town is just all about the Salem witch trials, They're profiting the off witches. Of it, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, just like with any kind of cryptid, like the you know the Bishopville Lizard Man. I mean, their whole town's about Lizard Man, you know, and uh, Hanobi is all about you know uh, Bigfoot and you know, all that kind of stuff. So they're profiting off of it. Uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, it brings the crowd in and, uh, and hopefully people learn the real history behind all this and they know it. And uh, I think there's plenty of shows out on television right now that are giving the real history behind this. Um, and so, you know, uh, they're even having a uh, Halloween Salem witch balls tonight. I mean, uh -huh. masquerades and movie <laughs> nights and they, they do make it fun. OK, they do. They make do. It fun and I know it. they've had several paranormal teams go out there, too, to do investigations. And I know that they have helped clear and release some of those spirits. And, uh, you know, and that's really what it is, is the more we tell stories about these locations, the more it holds these earthbound spirits here. So if we can help release them, you know, then we can yeah. help clear the land as well. Yes. Well, I think that's important that we do that. And I think that the fact that we can just talk about this, uh, it really heals a lot of the energy that's involved in this, um, in, in these trials, because this was a, a I don't want to say just a stain on the history here, but this was, it was really rough and, uh, and it was unnecessary, uh, what happened there. But, um, but yeah, in the spirit of Halloween, I, I'm glad that we got to discuss this tonight, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you, Tanya? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I do quantum healing, hypnosis, EFT tapping, and the emotion code. You can find me on my website at www.thesoulcafe.org. I actually, on uh, the Existential Empath podcast on YouTube and all podcast platforms, I actually recently, about two weeks ago, did a light language healing specifically for the Salem witch trials. So if any of you feel like you are connected to those witch trials and you're into the light language, then check out that video. Yeah, please do, everybody. Um, and also, everyone, I am uh, running a, a promo code on my in my shop, War Woman Goods. I sell vintage Native American jewelry, super high vibe jewelry. It's all cleansed and it comes to you in a, a great energy. OK, uh, but use the promo code Halloween. It's good through the weekend. And you guys, all my viewers get a discount. So please, you guys uh, use that. Uh, and so, Tanya, thank you so much for, for joining me tonight and for remote viewing this with me. Um, this has been a blast. It really has been fun. So It has been fun. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> of course. Well, I, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween, Tanya. Uh, I want the audience, you guys, please come join me this weekend. Tomorrow night, I'm going to have the horror 
Chronicles podcast, JT and Ryan on Space Out Radio. We're going to talk about some crazy, weird Halloween movies and stuff. And then on Sunday night, I have Dennis Carroll coming in to talk about reanimated corpses and voodoo and all sorts of zombie stuff. So, uh, and grave robbers. Okay. So y'all come <laughs> join me. It's, it's going to be a weekend full of Halloween spookiness. So, all right. Well, thank you again, Tanya. And uh, everybody, I'm sorry if I didn't get to all your comments tonight. We just had a lot to talk about. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow night. Everybody have a great night. And Tanya, thank you again. We'll see y'all soon.